Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Annie and today I'm going to be talking about all the books I read in September and October because I never did a wrap up for September. Um, happy November. I hope everyone's doing well. Sorry about my squeaky chair. <laughs> There's also people working outside, so it might be a little bit loud at times. And I was gonna wait till they were done for the day, but I simply would not have any light. Um, so that's what's going on with me. <sighs> okay, get settled in, get a beverage of choice. Um, because I have 14 books to talk about. I read seven books in each month, which is kind of nice. But also, I've been wishing I could read more, but I started uni, obviously, in September. And I do English literature, and I barely have time to read the books for my course, let alone extra reading. So a lot of the books I'm going to be talking about, I actually read on audio because I listen to audiobooks, like, while I walk around campus. Um... And that's what it is. But I kind of went through an audiobook slump. You'll see. Anyway, I'm going to start from the beginning of September and go till now. So hopefully I'll be remember I'll be able to remember these reads that I had because they are quite a while ago. First up, we have The Hotel Nantucket by Ellen Hildebrand. I read this on audio. This is, I found it very average. There is this hotel in Nantucket and these people are fixing it up and reopening it to the public and the owner really wants a five star review from this blogger and like instagram influencer that goes around to hotels and is really stingy with her ratings so she's never given anyone five stars and the owner of this hotel really really wants a five star um so there's lots of pressure on everyone we have a sort of a big cast of characters different perspectives. Um, I don't think it's first person, but I think it's third person limited and then you switch around characters. Um, there's lots of little storylines that interweave and stuff like that. It's sort of like a Hallmark movie, um, but I personally didn't find that I was really connected to any of the characters. Like, I don't know. I thought it was a good story. Like, it's not a bad book, but I just wasn't in love with it. Um, so yeah, I gave it a 2.5 stars. So just right in the middle, very average. And then I read on audio again, In My Dreams I Hold a Knife by Ashley Winstead. And again, I was, it was fine. I had heard actually a lot about this book online in the past and I was really excited. <clears throat> I was really excited to get to it, but it just didn't really do much for me. I think, I went through a phase where one, audiobooks were not really doing it for me, and two, thrillers were not doing it for me because I started to feel like they were all the same. And I know that they're not, but in my head I was like, oh god, just another thriller, here we go. Anyway, In My Dreams I Hold a Knife is about this woman that goes to uni. Well, okay, she went to uni. She has this friend group and one of the members of the friend group died and then someone else in the friend group was blamed for it. And it kind of led to the friend group like drifting after uni. And you get the two timelines. So you get a timeline from when they were in uni and everything was happening. And then the timeline, the present timeline, which is when they all go back for their high school or for their um, like, reunion and there's a lot of drama and secrets and stuff you know it actually was not bad like I think if I had been in a better mindset reading it or maybe if I read it physically I would have liked it better but there was lots of twists and turns it was oh hello it was definitely interesting um but yeah it was just it was just fine. It was fine. Next I read for school Phantomina or Love in a Maze by Eliza Haywood and I read this physically but it was out of this big Norton anthology and I really liked it. I gave it three stars. It's about, it's really short. It's like maybe 40 pages and it's about this woman that pretends to be a prostitute um, back in the 1700s and then she starts like sleeping with this man 
and he loses interest and then she creates all these different characters to like keep him interested. It's really cool and it's kind of like not something I would have thought would have been written about at that time. So it was interesting to read that and discuss it for class. I gave it three stars. Like it was fine. It's all seeming very mid so far, but then we get to something a lot better, which is The Final Empire by Brandon Sanderson. Um, I'm not going to really talk about this here because I have a whole fantasy reading vlog in which I read this, um, but I really liked it. I gave it four stars and I just the other day got The Well of Ascension, which is the second book in the series to read. Um, so I'm excited about that. Next up, I read Spells for, for Forgetting. Spells for Forgetting by Adrian Young, and I liked it a lot. This is a book about, um, there's this island that's very mysterious. It's got a bit of its own kind of magic, and there's a real sense of mystery about it, and like, I don't know, it's very cozy. It's sort of Gilmore Girlsy, but add a little bit of witchiness and magic. And um, our main character, works at this tea shop they have like magical teas and they used to read fortunes there and stuff um so she's kind of continuing on the family business of this tea shop um and it's one of those towns where everyone kind of knows each other's business and everyone is you know always watching and when our main character was a teenager her really good friend died and her boyfriend was blamed for the murder our main character's boyfriend um, so he has been just out of town for ages, exiled from the town, and then his mom dies and he comes back to scatter her ashes. And we start to delve into whether or not what happened in the past, like if we know everything about it. We just start to wonder whether there's more to what happened in the past than what the town thinks or what everyone says happened. And we get um, multiple timelines and multiple perspectives. You get both the main character and um, the guy's perspective. So I thought it was really good. The fall vibes were there, which is what I was really looking for. I saw Reagan recommend it um, from Peru's project and she really loved it. So I thought I'd give it a try and it was really good for spooky season. And I liked it. Yeah, it got me out of my thriller slump. Then I read Boy Parts by Eliza Clark. Um, also not gonna talk too much about this one because I did a whole video on it. It's my video, my try a chapter video. This is the one I chose and I loved it. And I'm gonna... Anyway, I'm writing... I'm writing my diss on Unhinged Woman in Modern Fiction, and I'm gonna probably include this in that. So really good. I loved it. Very unhinged, very crazy. Check trigger warnings, trigger warnings. After that, I read Finlay Donovan is Killing It by El Casimeno. Casim yeah, Casimeno. And I really liked it. I had heard a lot about it from like Katie Coulson and Olivia Reads a Latte. And they really liked it, but they said the series kind of went downhill. But I wanted to see for myself how I felt about it. I didn't like the first one as much as I was hoping to, but I did still think it was solid. It's about a woman named Finley, and she is an author, and she writes these like crime thrillers. And one day she's meeting up with her agent out of Panera, and she's talking about the plot of this book. And this woman overhears her and thinks she's a hit woman. And then it's like, hey, can you kill my husband, please? And Finley's like, absolutely not. And then she's like, well, how much are you paying me? And everything just goes from there. It's a lot of drama. It's like, there's a love triangle. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. I had a really good time. I didn't love it like I thought I was gonna love it, but I, it was still great. What can I say? I give it four stars. After that, I read The Writing Retreat by Julia Bartz. And this was so much fun. I read it on audio, as I did with most things in this video. And this book is about these women go on a writing retreat 
at this famous author's mansion off in the woods and it's snowing and it's that kind of isolated setting. This lighting is really not it and neither is this. I haven't figured out a cute place to film in my house yet. Our main character is an author. She had a best friend that was also an author and then they fell out one night and we don't really know why. And so that's a big secret, but it turned out the friend is also on the writing retreat and our main character hates this. She's feeling really awkward. She's not happy about this. The writing retreat is really intense and some things are not as they seem. People start dying and it goes from there. It's so drama. There's so many twists and turns. I think some people hate this book because they're like, there was too much going on and I got whiplash, but I really liked it. Can I tell you everything that happened now? No, no, I can't, but it was crazy and I liked it. Then I read Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies by Heather Fawcett and I really liked it. I read it on audio and this is about Emily Wilde. She lives in a world where fairies and magic and like probably trolls and stuff are real and it's kind of accepted that they're real and she goes to this far off place to study these this type of fairy that no one's really looked into and she's planning on making an encyclopedia of, of fairies and the book is told through her journal entries where she dialogues um where she records what happens every day she is extremely socially awkward doesn't like speaking to people doesn't really make friends very easily and she goes to this small town where it's very obvious she's an outsider and then soon enough she's joined by her colleague um who just kind of happens to want to tag along and she's sort of like really annoyed that he's there but he's very charismatic and becomes friends with the town people you see the relationship between those two grow and with the town at large and it becomes very found family very sweet very wholesome very autumn and i loved it I gave it 4.25 stars and I'm excited to continue the series. After that, I read Part of Your World by Abby Jimenez on audio and I liked it. I read um, Yours Truly by Abby Jimenez. That was the first one of her books that I've read and I really loved it considering I don't like romance. So I was having, I had really high hopes for Part of Your World because I've heard people say it was even better than Yours Truly. And I disagree. I think maybe it's just because of the kind of person I am. I'm not super into like the small town guy that like has a farm and like could be a cowboy. Like that's not really my type. So I think that's part of it. But this is about a woman who is, she works at a hospital and she comes from this really prestigious family of surgeons. And she's not a surgeon, she just works in the ER, which is kind of like a disappointment to her family. And she feels this really high pressure from everyone. On top of that, she went through a really, really bad breakup with this guy that also works at her hospital. And he's trying to take the house that they shared. And he moves back into their house with her while they're broken up. And then one day, her car breaks down outside this small town and she meets a guy and they strike up a whole friends with benefits situation and he's very small town not what she's used to i'm sorry about the noise he's just a sweet kind of guy and he's lovely i think abby Jimenez writes men that are just like wow i wish they were real because and he won't be lucky to date them but he's so green flags it's insane it's insane um but it's this whole thing of like, they live three hours away. She knows her family wouldn't approve of him. Um, he's sort of like, why can't we just be together? And he's, she's like, oh, you would never fit in my world. Fairy drama. Really? You know what? I did like it. I just didn't like it as much as yours truly. So I gave it a three star and I enjoyed it. After that, I read Five Survived by Holly Jackson. Hopefully you can see me. It is getting dark. Um, but this was really good. It's by the author of A Good Girl's Guide to Murder, which I love. And it's about these six friends that are going on a summer break vacation. And they're traveling across the country in this RV to go there. And then the RV breaks down in the middle of nowhere. And 
there is a man with a gun outside and he asks them, he tells them one of them has a secret and if they just tell the secret, then they can go. Um, but the thing is, is that everyone has secrets and no one wants their secret to be found out. This is really good, really good. Um, the main character, Red, she is an unreliable narrator. She is... Actually, I wouldn't say unreliable narrator, but she has a lot to hide and you don't figure it out for ages. And she is very on edge, fixates on little things, forgets things, um, completely zones out and doesn't hear what anyone's saying. So I guess, you know what, probably that is an unreliable narrator, but she's just a little quirky, Red. Okay, hi, I moved because the lighting was really bad. Hopefully this is better. I just need to figure out how to film in this house. Um, yeah, and probably film while it's actually daylight out. That would be nice. But today I just couldn't stop myself. I was like, I woke up at noon. I went on TikTok for like an hour. Um, I'm really into like food talk right now. And because I have to cook for myself and I was just like trying to figure out what to cook because I had to go grocery shopping. Then I actually did go grocery shopping. I went to this Asian market that I've never been. And I was struggling because I'm not that cultured, but I would like to be. But it's hard when everything's in a different language. So I couldn't really figure out what to get. I did get some bulldog noodles, which I'm really scared of because they're supposed to be really spicy. Anyway, I've just been thinking about food all day and then I haven't done any schoolwork. And was like, oh, I have to film a video. So here we are. Anyway, Five Survive is really good, really intense, and I loved it. I gave it a 4.25, really solid thriller. I felt really on edge the whole time I was reading it. So yeah, would recommend very highly. Almost done. So next we have Beach Read by Emily Henry, which I have read before, but I lost my physical copy ages ago and I can't find it, which is really sad. Um, I read this on audio. I loved it. I gave it the same rating as before, which is a four stars. Um, I didn't like reading it on audio as much as I liked physically reading it. I think I'm in a bit of an audiobook slump. I probably said that already, but I am. Um, I just continually read books and think I would probably like this better if I physically read it. I don't know what it is. Um, my hair is looking so glossy. Wow. Wow. Anyway. Beach Read, if you don't know, is about January and Gus. Finally, I remember some characters' names, thank God. Um, and they are both authors. Uh, it's told from January's point of view. So basically, she writes kind of fluffy rom-coms. And Gus writes gritty literary fiction. And they knew each other in uni and were kind of like rivals and i don't know if they were a rival it's kind of weird like he would just kind of like criticize her work in workshops and then she was just like to her she was like wow he is now my enemy but they never really talked and then this one time they interacted at a party but anyway she january her dad dies and she finds out that her dad had a mistress and he leaves her the house that he and his mistress shared. And so she sets out to go right there because she has to get out of her house, but she kind of hates that she has to go there because she didn't know that about her dad. And it's kind of changing her whole perspective on things. Um, so yeah, the book deals a lot with grief and kind of, anger and not really knowing like feeling like you didn't know someone that you thought you were close to she gets to the little cabin in this small town in michigan and the house sort of shares a deck with another house like there's just a little fence and it's all connected i guess and who is her neighbor but gus so the two of them get off to a not so friendly start and then they make a bet that the other one can't write their genre. Um, and that's where we go from. And they take each other on little dates. Like, they're not dates, but they are dates. 
uh, to teach the other one how to write their genre. So like January would take Gus to an amusement park and Gus takes January to like interview this woman that escaped a cult. <laughs> so it's really fun. Um, the Emily Henry banter is really good and I really liked it. After that, this will probably make some people mad, but I read Alone With You in the Ether by Olivia Blake and I gave it three stars. Now, three stars is not the end of the world. However, I think I am, I almost didn't give it a rating because I think I was so, in such a bad place to be reading this book. I read it on audio. I wish I read it physically, first of all. And secondly, I was going through something that made me really not want to read a love story. And it kind of pissed me off the more I listened to it. Cause I was like, okay, we get it. You're happy, like, shut up, you know? So I was in my bitter single era and I was not loving reading about that. Sometimes you want to read a love story when you're single and other times you really just would like love to stay far away from you. And I was in the second field. So that's me. And Alone With You in the Ether is a very popular book. It's about um, these two characters, Regan and Aldo. Um, and Regan is a woman who, she wanted to be an artist. She ended up committing some crimes and going to jail. And now she is going to enforced like meetings with a therapist. She's on some meds and she kind of hates it all. She volunteers at this um, art museum and she's just kind of floating through life. She has this boyfriend she doesn't really care about and she has a mood disorder and um, that really impacts her as well. And then Aldo is a guy that is very quiet and a little bit, he's just very unique, okay? He thinks a lot. He's into theoretical mathematics and he's a professor at this uni. He's so smart, but he has no people skills. And one day they meet and they decide to have six conversations. And over the course of that, love. So I thought the writing was really beautiful. I need to, I will give this a second try, I will. And I will read it physically and I'll take my time with it and I'll read it when I'm feeling like, yay, love, oh my God. Uh, but that time was not right now. So I just didn't really like it. Three stars is a bit of a generous rating for how I felt. I think I was scared to give it lower, but I would give it probably a two star if I'm being honest. Finally, I read Beer Wong's Unsolicited Advice for Murderers by Jesse Q. Sutanto and I loved it. I gave it a 4.25. This is just a cute little, murder mystery story it's like it's also very light on the murder and even the mystery anyway so there's this woman named Vera Wong and she is like this cute little old Asian lady and she has a tea shop and she has a son that she's always pestering but never talks to her and no one really goes to her tea shop and she's leading leading this sort of very boring and lonely life when we first meet her and then one day a dead body shows up in her tea shop and she decides she's gonna solve the murder she decides that it's murder and then she decides she's gonna solve it and she makes a list of suspects and then she befriends all the suspects and then it's sort of like found family but one of them is maybe the killer and i just found it so cozy it made me really hungry because she's always cooking and the food sounds amazing she is like the grandma I never had, but wish I did. Um, she is just very stubborn and kind of bosses everyone around, but I just loved it. And the audiobook was narrated by, let me see. It was narrated by Eunice Wong and she did an amazing job with the narration. So I really loved it. It got me out of my audiobook slump and we can only hope for good things from here. Thank you for watching everyone. That is all the books that I read the past two months. I am feeling hopeful about November and hoping that I create more time to read in my free time because I would like to. 
because I miss it. So yeah, I hope you are having a lovely day. If you would like to subscribe, you may subscribe. You're allowed. And if you would like to like this video, it helps me out. It helps people see it. Um, do that if you feel like you liked it. And yeah, again, I hope you're having a lovely day. And I will see you soon.